Welcome back to the channel guys. If you haven't watched my first video on the new light experience, I suggest you go back and you watch that and see what happens to a free to play player, how far they can get, what they can actually do into the game before you watch this next video because this video is focused on the catch-up DLC. So I went and purchased the $49.99 DLC which also included the season pass just to see how far I could get maybe if I almost like no life destiny for the last week so I got as far as I could I ran through all my prime ingrams I'll get into it in the video and if you're interested on what happens in a one week period trying to catch up in destiny this is the video for you stay tuned So in about 78 to 80 hours worth of gameplay, there was some downtime there. I used zero exploits, I didn't do a bunch of moon bounties for farming, and there are some mild spoilers coming up. So I got to 1035 light um, with the plus nine bonus there. I got to level 46 in the season pass. And then I did the campaign for Warmind to get Polaris Lance and Sleeper Simulant, also some Escalation Protocol thrown in there. Next on the list was the Forsaken DLC. Now, in my opinion, it was the best DLC. It was kind of a destiny saver. There were a lot of things wrong with the game at the time, but uh, Forsaken was just fantastic. The whole idea of Kate 6, the unfortunate things that end up happening in this DLC were a little heartbreaking, but you actually have to do this DLC to get the Ace of Spades, and it was a necessity for me because I love that gun. Up next on the list was the Shadowkeep DLC. Um, I enjoyed this DLC quite a bit and you actually have to do this as well to open up the Nightmare Hunts and also to get the Deathbringer Rocket Launcher Exotic. It's a small little quest line, doesn't take a whole long time to do and it really bumped up my power level as far as the heavy weapon slot goes. Now let's take a look at the exotics I got. So the Wither Horde, Ace of Spades, and then Sturm, Mita Multi-Tool, and I went ahead and did the Last Word quest. Risk Runner was a quest, Telesto, Polaris Lance, Borealis, Ruinous Effigy, which was part of the season pass, Sleeper Simulant, Worldline Zero, Tractor Cannon, Deathbringer, and then I got Orphidian Aspects, Storm Dancer's Brace, and Starfire Protocol. Now let's take a look at some of the quest lines that I have. I've got the Lumina quest line, Thorn, Truth, uh, some of the Drifter things, especially with the Malfeasance. Black Armory Key Mold, now that's going to be important for Izanagi's Burden. Giant's Might, which is Jotun. Bank Job, which is a Catalyst. Then all of the Pinnacle weapons that are available through the different vendors in the tower. And now a quick look at my inventory. So 88 enhancement cores, nine enhancement prisms. I ended up with 801 legendary shards, not a bad number there. 19,205 triumph score. And a quick look at some of the mods that I received. So these are through you know, package opening, token turn-ins and all that. But some of these are incredibly important. Um, as far as the reserves go, the ammo finders, the uh, resistant mods, they're pretty important and you're going to get these naturally as you play the game. So getting to 1035 wasn't a bad week's worth with the plus 9 bonus, level 46 season pass. If the video was helpful and you enjoyed it, a like and a sub would be very much appreciated. I'm going to leave you with one of the best cutscenes in Destiny history, the Cade 6 fight in the Prison of Elders. We'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. I said, back in your cages.
it. Now I'm pissed. Is that really all you got? You help me out here, little buddy. 